Elijah Mukala, I'm the WMO representative for Eastern and Southern Africa. We have just been attending the Climate Outlook Forum, which has taken place in uh, Khartoum, Sudan. This has given us uh, an impression of how the season is going to unfold, which is important for applications in, uh, in climate science. What have you benefited out of this conference in Khartoum, Sudan, and how unique is it to from other countries? Well, basically because we arrange uh, the Climate Outlook Forums, uh, in terms of the arrangement, it's basically the same, but the benefit is that uh, now we know that there is an impending, you know, El Nino, and so this will help us, you know, to prepare, you know, for the El Nino in case it happens. And so we will be ready, you know, when it happens to make sure that uh, we address, you know, disaster issues as well as food security issues in, in terms of our preparations. From this particular meeting, how did you observe El Nino? Is it coming when and in which month? and in which particular places? As it has been presented, I think we're getting indications that the Onino will happen, but we still need one more month to actually confirm definitely you know, that it's going to take place. But although the indications right now are showing that the El Nino is approaching. Evelyn Komtunga from the National Agricultural Research Organization, NARO, Uganda. Every before season, we get uh, the IGAD Climate and Prediction Center, Nairobi, to give us a seasonal forecast. And for us in Uganda, this seasonal forecast is very important because we develop early warning messages of how the season is going to affect the communities, both in agriculture, livestock, and other sectors like water, fisheries in the country. Specifically for this Khartoum Sudan Climate Outlook Forum, how have we benefited as a country? As a country, this is a season that is a dry season, and it points to conditions for harvesting, it points to post-harvest losses, and so as a country, the early warning messages that would drop here will help in reducing post-harvest losses in terms of crops, but also in anticipating and planning for how to use the water resources. Professor Gallo, I lead the Climate Risk Management Center dealing with application and uh, prediction early warning. Uh, what we are doing at the beginning of every season, we release the outlook for the next three months. In Sudan Khartoum, we have just released the outlook for June, July, August. And the key highlight is most of the rains during June, July, August is for the northern sector of our region. What we are saying, many areas are showing depressed rainfall, apart from some areas which we have highlighted. And uh, all that we are saying, early warning is for early action. And uh, what we are requesting everybody, just like a risk management tool, to take this thing seriously and action they are going to do for the next three months to see if they have too much food, if they have too much water, how they can actually be able to uh, work on or save on what they have to extend them beyond the next three months. Beyond the next three months, we think there will be a El Nino. El Nino means equatorial region, enhanced rainfall with a lot of water everywhere. Again, we are uh, requesting people to take advantage of that particular water. Please, if you can have this as much as you can, have it because after every El Nino, there is a sister called Anina, which now is depressed rainfall. So if we never, never been able to take advantage of too much water, which will be lying everywhere towards the end of the year, you will actually be under a very, very depressed situation after the El Nino when La Nina comes. And this is a new way that we can look at things differently to make sure that whenever it's too much, we take advantage of it for the worst days. And this is a subject plan for which we want to do under resident program of IGAT. Based on this information that you've given, at least decide for us a few countries that are expecting more rain is than others. What we have done is, if you look at the western time, most of our water for our rains come from the Indian Ocean. And when you look at the whatever we have, data we have, uh, prediction we have, the Indian Ocean bringing water into the uh, our eastern part of the continent is going to be limited, restricted, and uh, that will mean that most of water for the rain in the region is going to come from Atlantic and the uh, Central African country, Congo Basin, and things like that. So it all means only some countries to the west of the region that are going to be taking advantage of this particular type of, especially when the 
and the highland areas facing the western uh, areas which have got a lot of motion. But what we really request you, every country has done a detailed country, detailed map, and we encourage everybody to work with the National Weather Services to get a detailed national map. Professor Hussein Adam from Sudan. I am a meteorologist, agrometeorologist. I was in the University of Jazeera for 35 years. At present, I'm the president of the Sudan Meteorological Society. The meeting has been very useful for all participants, I think. And particularly in Sudan, because Sudan is an agricultural country and it depends a lot on this seasonal forecast. I say in Sudan, seasonal forecast is invaluable. You can't put a value to it. Seasonal forecast is very, very important for us in rainfed agriculture and irrigated agriculture. How would you advise your fellow countrymen on the issues of climate change and rain outlook? Well, climate change have a, a strong views on this. I think climate change are telling us to uh, use alternative energy sources, plant more trees, uh, unless they have uh, a political will. Caroline from Kenya. I work for the IGAD Center for Pastoral Areas and Livestock Development. I'm here in Khartoum, Sudan, attending the Greater Horn of Africa Climate Outlook Forum, which is a forum that uh, issues the climate outlook for the Greater Horn of Africa, and in this particular case for the season beginning June to August. This is a very important forum because um, many people come uh, from different sectors and we meet and discuss uh, not only the outlook itself, but what impacts the projected uh, forecast will be for the various sectors. I work for pastoral and arid areas uh, most of the time, and so this is important for us because it will help us to know what the condition in these areas which have really little rainfall and therefore require a lot of planning for proper regeneration of pastures to be. So it would really help us to see and to know that in the next three months what do we expect in terms of rainfall and so how can we plan so that the people living in these difficult environments can be able to sustain their livelihoods. Specifically on the message you've got from the meeting here in Sudan, how are you going to disseminate it to your people you are working with? I'm in touch with through various forums where we meet with people that work at grassroots level. I personally work at uh, IGAD, which works at a regional level, but we interact with people who work with the communities, mainly NGOs uh, in the communities down there. And what we do is we're having a meeting, for example, for the regional livestock working group, which is uh, on Thursday this week. And in that uh, meeting, we'll be able to tell them what the forecast is saying and what are the possible implications. And so we discuss with them and see what is the way forward, what mechanisms can they put in place in case the rain is not too much so that uh, the animals can still have pasture and they can have water. And if it's going to be too much, what they need to do so that we either way, if it's a flood or a drought, they don't have to suffer.